Hi folks, my name's Darren and I wanted to kitbash Pedro Cantor. Two years ago now I saw a video from Peter Wargamer where he kitbashed his own Pedro Cantor using a Primaris Marine and some of the old parts from the resin version of Pedro Cantor. I recently went back to that video and I thought to myself now with the new kits that are in production there might be a potential for making a bit more of an accurate one without having to use the original kit which is quite hard to come by and hard to work with. I've also seen some really cool inspiration from other members of the community, uh, Chris Buxley being one of them who did an awesome Targaradon Pedro Cantor kit bash. Obviously we're using his LED stuff which is really cool but I wanted to do something different myself. Actually create a Pedro Cantor that wasn't in Gravis armor but also has those visual cues that you know from the original Pedro Cantor model. For the base of this kit bash, I used the Primaris Captain with Power Sword. Really cool kit. It does have a lot of components, which allows you to swap, change, and, and kit bash to your heart's content. The first thing I did was remove most of the components from the sprue. So things like the torso, the shin guards, the backpack, the cloth, the little dangly cloth thing, and the kind of rosette thing that sticks on his chest. And then using my hobby knife and a small file, I removed the mold lines and any remaining sprue tabs. I then glued the majority of the parts together, just leaving off things like the backpack, that dangly cloth bit and the small rosette. Now I want to be completely transparent and as you can see in the corner I've got a kit count going on because this did actually take up a lot of kits. However I really feel the results speaks for themselves and I really hope you folks agree too. Now on to kit number two, it was Primaris Lieutenant Amulius. Quite a rare kit to get hold of, it's usually at events and things like that. I happen to have a few with me because I bought them when I went to a, an open day one day. All I needed was the terrages, the little dangly leather cloth bits. So using my clippers, I made small controlled cuts, slowly removing the remaining pieces of plastic around the turrages, primarily being the shin guards and the torso. I do remove the belt later, as I'm going to use the belt for the cloth from the original model, as that fits better on the actual base model. I then gently removed the belt buckle from the turrages, and removed the belt buckle from the original loincloth. There we go, loincloth, not dangly cloth bit. I then trimmed down the new belt buckle and the turrages to make sure they kind of fit together, going backwards and forwards, smoothing areas, making small cuts and things like that. Once I was happy with that fit, I then attached the normal belt buckle to the model and then glued the new turrages to that belt buckle. Kit number three now, and I used the Grey Knight Standard Kit. I didn't have this kit. I was fortunate enough to be sent it a while ago but from a good friend, which is very convenient as I just needed the Storm Bolter and the magazine that you insert into the Storm Bolter. So as normal, I removed all those parts from the sprue, tidied them up, removed the mold lines. I also had to remove the arm and the residual wrist from the Storm Bolter, making sure I compared it against the hand that sticks out on the Primaris Captain model. I then glued the Storm Bolter to the wrist. Kit number four I'll be using quite a few times. It's the Imperial Fist Primaris Upgrade Sprue. For this next part, I just used one of the shoulder pads. If you're not already put off by it, it's kit number five. Using the new Primaris Captain in Gravis Armor Kit. Another fantastic kit. It's one model, but it comes with so many different options. For this specific kit bash, we're going to be using the right-handed Power Fist, as that's what Pedro Cantor has. Obviously, you can mix up your model however you want, if you want to do it a different way. It doesn't have to be right-handed Power Fist. It could be left one, as they're more common. But this kit's great. It's got so many different weapon options and choices. I'm planning to use that massive two-handed chainsaw at some point on another kit bash as well. So, so make sure you subscribe and hit that bell so that you don't miss that video when it comes out. And also, if you've got any theories as to who that could be, let me know in the comments below. I really digressed through that segment, didn't I? So just to clarify, I removed all the bits I needed from the sprue, the power fist, tidied it all up, and then I made slow and controlled cuts to the arm on the captain to get the power fist to fit. Once happy with that, I glued the power fist to the arm. 
Oh look, it's another Primaris Captain, but this time with a plasma pistol. This one's been sitting in my bits pile for a while. I'm going to use the shoulder pad and I'm going to use the helmet with the laurel wreath around it. The rest of it just goes away in my bit box. Now I failed to mention that when I clipped the belt buckle from the cloth tabard to keep hold of the cloth bit, if you look at the original Pedro Cantor model, he has a small dangle of cloth hanging from his side and this is like a perfect fit for that really. It's got some good flow to it. You've already got it to hand and with a little bit of sanding and carving down you can get it to work really well this stage of the kit bash we're going to get onto the finer detail bits so we're going to be clipping out the rosette bit that goes on the chest and we're going to be removing two parts from the imperial fist upgrade sprue which are the small little i can't describe what it is like trinket with a small imperial fist slash crimson fist emblem on it and one of the tilting shields with the same emblem on i then get that small little trinket and just remove Crimson Fist emblem off of it. We're gonna be using this for an embellishment on the belt buckle. Once again, if you look at the Pedro Cantor model, all the artwork, they have a emblem on their belt buckle. Be super careful here. It's a very small piece of detail. Don't want you cutting yourself. Make sure you are sensible, as in like, not like me. Trim the piece down a bit, usually the back end, because that's the bit that's gonna to stick to the belt buckle. Use some sanding sticks or any files or anything like that you've got to make sure you get a nice flat surface so that the contact is strong. I used a pair of tweezers to help me control where I placed this piece. It's very small and easily lost, so be careful. I then stuck the rosette to the chest. Next, I'm going to cut the Crimson Fist emblem from the Tilting Shield, as we're going to use this to stick on the Power Fist. It's quite tricky, this one. You have to be very careful. As you can see, I'm trying to be very careful. I do end up breaking the blade, the tip of the blade, so be super careful when you do it. And with some careful trimming and sanding, I managed to glue it to the Power Fist. This next kit, I used another Primaris Captain in Gravis Armor again, but the older version, where he's holding the power sword up in the air. I'll put a picture, you'll, you'll see which one I mean. You could use any aggressor kit if you wanted to, the ones that have the storm bolters on. I just happened to have bits of this laying around, so I used it. What I did here was remove the magazine from the backpack, as I'm going to be using that to attach to Pedro. It's a bit tricky, a lot of finagling, as I needed to bend the magazine around a bit to fit it, but once I married it up and compared it against the backpack and the magazine of the Storm Bolter, I was happy enough to glue it in place and set it in stone. You may notice some gaps on this particular part. What I do to fill them rather than using something like green stuff or melee part, which is great and a fantastic tool, I am just sometimes a little bit impatient and want to get the job done. <laughs> rather than waiting for things to dry. I use a thing called sprue goo. You've probably heard of it. It's a pot of glue where I've had small sections of sprue melting in there and it creates this viscous liquid where you can use to seal gaps and things like that. Really handy, really cool to use. Once it's dry, which is relative quickly in the grand scheme of things, you can shave it down and smooth it down to your heart's content. Everything I did on here, any gap that was left, I used that sprue goo to fill that gap in. And we're on to the final kit. This one might seem like a bit of a unique kit to choose. The reason I chose it is because I didn't want to use a banner from the Space Marine Tactical units, as I felt they were quite small in comparison to the scale of a Primaris Marine. So I used the back banner of an ironclad dreadnought. All I needed to do with this is to remove it from the sprue, clean up the mold lines, remove any remaining sprue tabs, and make small cuts to the main shaft of the banner till I was happy with the right height. I also took the remaining tilting shield from the Imperial Fist upgrade sprue, shaved the back down, shaved the Aquila on top of the banner and glued that tilting shield to that Aquila. It was definitely a very cool idea and a very sound idea not to pin this banner and really didn't bite me in the ass later on. Once I'd finally stuck the banner in place, it was ready to be painted. I 
I didn't record the painting process as this is my first video back from a long time off. However, if you are interested in seeing how I do the painting, please let me know in the comments below if it's something you'd like to see. If you're just happy with the kit bash as well, that's fine. Just let me know below. But overall, I really enjoyed this project. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I hope you folks like the end result. If you have any ideas or suggestions of what you'd like to see next, let me know in the comments below. Any feedback on the video, again, let me know below. I just want to make sure the next video I produce is improved in comparison to this one. So yeah, I've uh, waffled on far too much now. Please don't forget to do all the good things that people ask you to do on YouTube. Subscribe, like, all that sort of stuff. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye.